lots more sunshine today, even though they anticipated rain for the whole week. And what did I read today? This was kind of interesting. It was a follow-up story for that music band here in Canada where there was a drone flying around their concert where at first they thought it was an authorized drone per se, but apparently it was just some random person. And the police actually approached the person, so they thought, oh, oh, they arrested them, they got rid of the footage and they wanted it. Whereas now, apparently with an update, they actually did communicate with the actual drone operator, which was kind of interesting. So at first, because the drone operator wasn't supposed to fly there, he was really hesitant about posting, for example, the footage or anything like that. But when this band basically said what they said, for example, he actually went to them and said, hey, I am the drone operator. And there was this voice recording they took on how apparently the interaction went with the police officers. It was kind of interesting. You can hear it here first. Hey, my guy. Um, I just wanted to give you an update on this whole drone thing. So that was my drone and uh, I purposely didn't put up any shots or anything because um, yeah, the police did come and check me out, but they were two very nice gentlemen. They, uh, they just came and asked me if I had a permit for it and uh, they looked at my shots, they loved it and uh, they told me I should come work for the police force. But. Um, I definitely got a wicked relationship with you too. That was so cool. I really appreciate you for even doing that. Like, trust me, it's wild. Um, but yeah, I have the footage. So um, let me clean it up and I'll send it to you. And thank you for telling them to be lenient on me. Nah, they were super cool. So after that, that's apparently what happened where he gave the band the footage and they started to post, I guess, the drone videos on their social media. And as well, the person themselves, it seems like, started to post some clips as well. So kind of interesting again with the reaction of the police officers, like, okay, it was a cool shot. Maybe you should work for us and all that too. Now, while that's done, I suppose, where the average person would say, hey, cool shot and all that. And even here, like the officials, they said, okay, whatever. It seems like for a lot of drone operators that run commercial businesses doing these types of work, they're actually against it. But at the same time, when I read some of the comments, why do so many people like this, just from what I see, mislead about the laws and so forth? Like here, for example, you can see in the post, it says, it is illegal to fly over a crowd at an advertised event without the proper licenses and permits, irregardless of the way of the drone. An SFOC needs to be applied for and granted more than a month before the operation. Transfer Canada will fine you up to $5,000 for this type of activity. Yeah, like I'm thinking, what are you talking about? That doesn't apply, for example, to micro drones. The only situation in this case, technically speaking, in terms of the federal law, is if there was a blanket ban for flights in general. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like what I mentioned before, where it seems kind of ridiculous in certain areas where like, even if you're flying a model aircraft, I don't care, that's illegal now. Whereas this, again, is a common theme when it comes to commercial operators in this case. It seems like they're either ignorant about the law or they mislead people publicly because this happened more than once, as you guys know, that I talked about too. And then there's more here, people saying super illegal and dangerous to fly a drone over a crowd without a license or permit. Footage aside, this behavior shouldn't be celebrated. And then some people say, I agree. A lot of pilots are new and don't know the laws. The police won't arrest him, they can't, but Transport Canada can give him a hefty fine. Definitely not worth it. The irony of that statement in terms of understanding the law. But it makes me think too, just in general, in terms of drone laws and so forth, do you think it's worse where somebody is flying a drone when they shouldn't be, for example? Let's just say it's controlled airspace, they're flying the bigger drone and they just didn't know. Do you think that's worse or people like this, where some of them, from what I gather, they say they're licensed and all that, yet they're not even explaining the laws accurately in that sense which one do you think is worse and it brings up the point too just in general is this really about safety or is it more about control because people don't like others being able to do stuff like this as people for example let's just say certain operators they want to be the only ones to be able to do it just from what i've seen anyways that seems to be the case in a lot of situations unfortunately the only way I can see currently anyways, just based on all the facts, assuming he's flying on micro drone and all that, in terms of getting punished federally, the only way that could happen so far from what I've seen is if he actually hurted someone as a result of his drone flying. For example, 
He flew it irresponsibly, like when he was going back, let's just say he smashed someone in the head or something like that and it seriously injured them. Then he could be punished, for example, federally, because technically the rules for the micro drones in general is to be, quote, safe. And you could argue in that case afterwards as, hey, you weren't safe, so he could be punished in that way. But not in general, actually, with what these guys are saying, like you can't fly around crowds and all that. I mean, it's more up to you to determine what you're doing is safe, because right now it's one of those kind of gray areas. It's very broad. And no, again, in my opinion, you cannot use that argument of, oh, if that guy ever hurts someone in this case, that's it. You're ruining it for the rest of us. Nope, you can't use that argument anymore. Just look at the history here in Canada of drones crashing into manned aircraft. Guess who did it? The police and all that. And look what happened. And I don't see people like this, for example, talking about it all the time. So don't be a hypocrite, in my opinion, if you're trying to talk about things like safety and all that, in my opinion, too. It's stuff like this that creates more issues with the hysteria and all that, giving inaccurate laws and all that, and trying to make every drone sound like some kind of terrorist weapon or something like that. I mentioned the other day, for example, there's no way I would have flown that close to the band and all that unless I was actually coordinating with them, having permission and all that to do it, because in general, I don't think you should take the risk in that regards. I mean, just imagine if something happened with the liability and all that. But at the same time, you shouldn't try to make it sound so over the top just because some people have a conflict of interest where, again, they want to be the only ones to be able to do it. Because usually it is only these situations too, where somebody captures, let's just say, quote, spectacular footage. Then people start coming out saying, oh, it's dangerous and so forth. And then I was reading this story. Apparently there was a SpaceX launch that didn't go as planned as the rocket crashed i guess during the operation this one says spacex launches 21 starlink satellites but rockets first stage crashes on landing barge and you can see like the videos and stuff that were posted of this since it seems like it was being shown live it says after standing down from the pilot polaris dawn launch late tuesday spacex shifted gears and pressed ahead with plans for back-to-back -back launches of starlink internet satellites early wednesday one from Florida and the other from California. But the second flight was called off after the first stage used in the Florida launch toppled into the Atlantic Ocean and broke apart while attempting to land on a SpaceX drone ship stationed several hundred miles northeast of Cape Canaveral. The landing mishap ended a string of 267 successful booster recoveries dating back to February 2021. The Falcon 9's second stage, meanwhile, successfully carried 21 Starlink satellites to their planned orbit. Yeah, the videos are kind of crazy because there's multiple angles too, where you could clearly see in one of them, it looked like it just blew up for whatever reason. Parts started to fall apart and then there was other angles as it was landing. It basically crashed and you can see all this smoke and so forth. But as they say, I guess their streak is broken.
Alright, see you guys later.